so I didn't have a lot of maneuver room, you know, to, to go. I, I was stuck right there. Uh, but uh, this guy was about 5 kc off, and uh, and when I called him, I just never forget his coming back. Now, uh, this uh, my first call was W2LEO, lemons, elderberries, and oranges, uh, and I was licensed in New York State. And uh, but we we moved fairly frequently, and uh, so not long after that. We moved to Maryland, Y Mills, Maryland, big budding megapolis of 87 people, and uh, so you see, French Lake is big time, big time for me. But uh, I, there I became W3, wiggling, screaming Elvis, and that was right at the time Elvis was ascending, and the rock and roll came into uh, the uh, public domain. But anyway. Uh, uh, that, that's how I happened to get oriented on CW. I wound up having handling uh, traffic. Some of you remember the old uh, ARC-5 VFOs, BC-454s, 455. <coughs> 454 was uh, the 80-meter uh, version, 455, 40-meter. <coughs> VFO 28 volt using uh, 1625s, which is the 12-volt version of the 807. But they were a lot cheaper. They were surplus. Anyway, that was my first VFO. It was sort of a matching transmitter for this receiver. But it was more than I could afford back when I first uh, got on the red handbook, 1950 handbook. And uh, so uh, when I looked in there and then just saw this page of schematics uh, that just caught my imagination. You know, that, what fantastic that here's a way to learn what all this is about. And uh, so I had to wait for a week until I had enough money to pay <laughs> for that ARRL handbook. But I still have that red uh, handbook, and that that's how I was able to quickly learn how to understand what Mr. Reskall had to tell me. And, uh, uh, though, so that led to a challenge, and it's just interesting how one person can so orient you as a, as a child, as a student, into a whole <laughs> career that you wind up. I have to tell you something else that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, we used to communicate after school and even after I uh, uh, went on to high school and then went on to college. Uh, we would QSO each other on A B or CW from time to time. I would talk to them maybe a couple times a year or something like that until uh, later, and I went on, and I, I got in the military. And uh, but it's interesting how that was so uh, influential in my military. Uh, in high school, in my senior year in high school, I was in Maryland. Uh, I came home from school one day, and Pop says, uh, uh, "Bill," he says, "Your grandfather served in the military." He says, "I served in the military in World War II." He says, and. Uh, uh, if he, if you want to drive the car this weekend, you're going to serve in the military by joining the National Guard, which is having a, a recruiting drive going on right now in Centerville. Well, I was going to be in ROTC in college anyway. I mean, it was mandatory back in those days. And uh, so, I mean, that was a given. So it didn't make much difference to join a little bit sooner than uh, I would otherwise have, have been in ROTC. So I signed up, but little did I know how that interest had, had been uh, encouraged by Fred Reskall, my teacher, would impact a military person, a private, and they put me in as a radio section leader. And we had a section of, of eight men in the in the radio section. I was the only one that knew how to use the equipment, I mean, who could operate the equipment on CW or phone. All the rest of them had never been trained and learned how to use all the equipment that was in that section. And so here was a private. I was put in a position of responsibility. I hadn't even been to basic training. <laughs> and uh, so as a result of that, uh, I was in a, a sergeant first class slot. And I just went bing, bing, bing right up the ladder. I was promoted to corporal as soon as I was eligible and then promoted to sergeant. Rose staff sergeants and sergeant first class, bing, bing, bing. And uh, so all of that as a result of having 
been encouraged by one man in uh, junior high school. I, I took the exam for a, a first class radio telegraph, radio telephone license, and a second class radio telegraph license. By that time, I had a 35 word per minute uh, code proficiency uh, certificate from ARRL, and uh, so I knew I could handle the code, the commercial code requirement, and so I took that first class uh, ham radio uh, exam, which was, uh, pardon me, the amateur extra exam. That was when it was brand new. This it was a brand new amateur extra came out in about 1954, 55, or somewhere along in there. But, but the year it came out, I decided I was going to get one. And uh, so I took the exam, and uh, it was a pretty tough exam, I, I have to say. And, but I remembered one question. I remembered some of the questions in there pretty well. It, I took the first class radio telephone exam endorsement to a second class ticket <coughs> endorsement. And then, uh, so the, uh, on that exam, I never forget going in there. I was uh, 17 years old then. And uh, I remember taking that exam for the radio telephone first class license. That was the highest license you could get back then. And, uh, and I was going through it and I came to this question which had taken me a long time to figure out. It was the very same question that I had gotten on the amateur extra exam which I had taken a month before. And it was a uh, question about a capacitor, an inductor, and a resistor in series par parallel, and you have to find and they, you have to figure out the source impedance for that. Well, you know, that's no easy job to figure all that out. And I just remembered one thing: 3.28 ohms. <laughs> that was the answer. And that's so boom! I just put that on there and went on to the next question. I saved myself probably about 20 minutes on that exam on that one question the pattern of how they would assign radio calls, commercial broadcast calls. And, uh, the uh, stations were uh, given, assigned the first two letters, like W, A, and then the third letter would be the one that would vary depending on when the application for a broadcast license came in. And so you had W, A, A, like F, for instance, which is out in uh, uh, out west, uh, W, uh, and then they went to WB, and then through the alphabet there, WC, and then the alphabet, and then so WCA was the first one in the WC series. O was then WCAO, the first station I worked at as a 18 year old, and uh, so. That was my introduction to radio broadcast, commercial radio, and I loved it. I just had a ball, and I got a letter there at the end of that uh, season when I went back to college from the chief engineer on WCAO stationery thanking me for my help uh, as a summer relief engineer at that station.